So this, this timing of the trigger is very intriguing for me. And I sent questions over the last two weeks for national and international uh, experts that I know that have very long experience in this field. And there were seven questions. Some have the time to answer back and some didn't have the time to answer back. Some have detailed response and some have minimal response. And the question were, uh, how do you time the trigger in IVF? And I had a lot of, of responses, at least 10 responses from uh, national and international experts, really international experts. Uh, does it vary with the protocol? And yes, in, in 80%, the answer, yes, it varies with the protocol. Does it vary with the response of the patient? And yes, it varies with the response of the patient in most of the replies that I had. Is it important at all? Ah, yes, it is important. It is important. Does timing affect the embryos or the endometrium? I did not have a proper uh, response from... Uh, uh, for this question, whether it is the implantation or the embryo that is affected by the trigger, does it matter? Be, does it not matter because of the abundance of embryos? So we have a lot of embryos to do fresh and to freeze. So this is why it is not important. And the answer was no, it is important. It, is it redundant, permissive that you can have uh, the criteria on day zero, day one, day two? And the answer was no, it is not that redundant. So IVF treatment uh, involves administration of uh, supraphysiologic doses of uh, follicle-stimulating hormone to induce a growth of multiple follicles. And once the follicles grow to an appropriate size, a trigger has to be given. The trigger in IVF is very important to loosen the oocyte within the follicle to be able to aspirate it and also to induce final maturation of the oocyte that will not be induced without the trigger. Uh, and a lot of data endorsed the overwhelming impact of ovarian stimulation on egg quality as opposed to other steps. And this makes optimization, of course, of ovarian stimulation the only uh, uh, instrument in our armamentarium to improve oocyte quality. So, ovarian stimulation and when to end ovarian stimulation is very important. Uh, in, in an old publication, it was shown that the mean follicular growth rate was variable between ovarian stimulation cycles, natural cycle and oral contraceptive cycles, and that the rate of growth in a stimulated cycle is faster than the rate of growth of the follicle in natural cycles. One of the responses that I had from two of the most eminent uh, professors that I sent the question to was, just look at the Ashley guidelines and you will find all what you need. Uh, and in the Ashley guideline, it was shown that the association of follicle size as a triggering criteria with outcome has not been sufficiently studied. And physicians should choose the follicle size upon which they end their stimulation uh, on a case-to-case -case basis. And that the decision on timing of the trigger in relation to follicle size is multifactorial. And these words has been measured with a, a, a weight of goal uh, that the timing of trigger should take into account the size of the growing follicle cohort. It did not say the size of the leading follicle the size of the growing follicle cohort, and this is very important. Uh, the hormonal data on the day of the pursuit trigger, and we are, of course, we have different views about, uh, uh, upon this, as you've seen from uh, really expert in this webinars. The duration of stimulation is also important. The patient burden, as Professor Khalifa showed, the financial cost, as Professor Khalaf showed, and the experience of previous cycles, as Professor uh, Sham, Khalaf, and uh, Ahmad have uh, stated in their presentation. So most often in the literature and in most of center, if you ask that final oocyte maturation is triggered when two to three follicles 
are more than 17, or that in the uh, Ashley guideline that it is triggered at sizes of uh, several of the reading follicles between 16 to 22. So it is very and highly individualized decision. And as you've heard already, the, uh, the, it is not recommended to base timing of final or site maturation on estradiol levels alone. And also it is not recommended to base timing of final or site maturation on estradiol per the ratio as you've already uh, heard. So uh, the, the guidelines group does not think that as Professor Khalab stated and Professor Khalifa stated that estrogen is very important in the decision. It, it didn't say that it is not, it should not be done, but it is not important in the decision. Uh, a very nice article in uh, 2020 uh, showed a very important fact that if you divide the follicles at the day of ovum pickup to small, medium, and large, that you will have better outcome from uh, large follicles, uh, from medium follicles and large follicles as compared to small follicles. So as you induce the follicles to grow from small to medium to large, the uh, maturation of the oocytes will improve. A very, very interesting article uh, in Fertility and Sterility, I think it was a letter to the editor from three of the most eminent uh, uh, consultants of the field, use a very nice term, the term TOM or term oocyte maturation and term ovarian simulation and its impact on oocyte competence. And they, in, in, in this uh, present uh, paper, they simulated the process of follicular maturation to the process of labor. And they stated that exactly as you do multiple things to ensure that the, the baby is well, you have to do similar things for uh, oocytes. So, and they proposed the existence of a minimal amount of time required for an egg to reach developmental competence, or what they call term or site maturation. Uh, it was evident from this article that a natural cycle time to site maturation appears to be 13 to 15 days from the first day of menses, and it is shorter in older women. But in a stimulated cycle, the story is different. It depends on a follicular growth, which is faster, on FSH doses, which is higher than that present in the natural cycle and different also in nature, and uh, on the fact that stimulation moves granulosa cells from around the oocyte to the follicle wall, and this is an important uh, confounder in the process of uh, stimulation. In 2019, it was shown that the duration of stimulation that can affect poor responders is different from the duration of stimulation that can affect normal responders. And that in normal responders, seven to eight days of stimulation are associated with the highest implantation, highest pregnancy, and highest uh, life birth rate. Whereas in poor responders, a duration that is shorter than this is associated with better outcome. And if you look at the figures from this presentation, like six to seven days and seven to eight days, you will immediately realize that we all have different experiences and we have different uh, patient profiles because in this uh, webinar, you've heard from experts that uh, days of stimulation in their patients and in their hands are longer than these days that are presented actually in several papers. So we here speak about the duration of stimulation and it's important as an aid to obtain uh, oocyte competence, not only maturity.
if you choose to give a trigger on a day, and this day, the proper day was day 14, for example, and it was uh, Thursday, could you prolong for two days without harm? And uh, the ongoing pregnancy rate and the implantation rate are affected if you prolong the days of stimulation two more days above the appropriate time calculated for the patient. So this is again refers to TOM, the time to maturation, which is mentioned in this nice article of fertility and sterility. So the days, the days of stimulation are important and they could be used as an aid to tailor the stimulation uh, to each patient. Because we are allowed to do this because in the guidelines, they stated that the, uh, the trigger is an individualized decision depending on patient profile, etc. So it is widely accepted that ovarian follicles that are too small are less likely to respond suitably to trigger administration. And ovarian follicles that grew too large are also uh, not uh, appropriate for obtaining uh, an oocytes with full developmental competence. You can obtain mature oocytes, but mature oocytes is a different concept from developmentally competent oocytes. You want the oocytes to mature, to produce uh, good blastocysts that do not generate and good blastocysts that implant and good blastocysts that result in a proper neonatal outcome. What is the appropriate size? What is the appropriate size of follicles needed to trigger uh, ovulation? Uh, in, in older articles, 2014, etc., the overall follicles of 16 to 22 milli on the day of oocyte fever are more likely to contain mature oocytes than smaller follicles, while larger follicles are more likely to contain post mature oocytes. But this is the day of oocyte fever. Limited data actually exists to establish which follicle size on the day of the trigger are most likely to yield mature oocytes. So if you take that the oocyte in two days will grow three millimeter and that the, the follicles from 16 to 22 on the day of oocyte retrieval are appropriate, then this will be on the day of the trigger uh, indicating a size of 13 to uh, 18 millimeter. If you look carefully at the ESHLE guidelines, you will find the word, the profile or the cohort of follicles. And the cohort of follicles indicates that, yes, you can have three follicles of 17, but what about the rest of the follicles? What about the rest of the follicles that are larger than 10 and more or equal to 17? Are they less than 30% of the cohort? Are they 30 to 60% of the cohort? Are they more than 60% of the cohort? Actually, if you trigger final oocyte maturation, when you have a high proportion of follicles in the range of 11 to 17 millimeter, then you will have the best outcome in terms of pregnancy, implantation, and live birth rate as compared if you uh, have a lower proportion of follicles uh, in the cohort in this range. So you have to keep your eye on the size of the leading follicle and then you build up on this one, two or three more days to have a higher proportion of follicles in the size that you want, in the size of the, that you want that 11 to 17 according to several papers. In uh, 2016, uh, in also a nice article, they divided follicles more than 17 millimeter on the day of the trigger. And if you have a low percentage of these follicles, you can have more oocytes than if you have high percentage of uh, follicles more than 17. 
So yes, you need a cohort of follicles between 11 and 17, but you don't want to want to wait more for a lot of follicles to exceed 17, because if you wait more uh, for a lot of follicles to exceed 17 or 18, you will end up probably with fewer oocytes and lower oocyte competence. And as you can see from these figures, uh, you have the same number of follicles in the two cases, but if you wait more uh, for more follicles to exceed 17 millimeter, as you see here on this right case, you will have lower oocytes as compared if you trigger earlier. So uh, this is also a very uh, nice article that used forest blot to demonstrate the fact that we are speaking about that if you uh, have, you look at the cohort of follicles uh, that you have and you calculate the follicles that are 12 to 19 millimeter, if they are less than 70%, you will end up with a fewer number of oocytes as compared if you have uh, more than 90% of the follicle in this size. So yes, you have follicles that are more than 17 millimeter, but you have to wait to have uh, most of your cohort that in the range of 12 to 19 millimeter, because this will result in more oocytes, will result in more mature oocytes, and also will result in higher uh, number of good zygotes. So follicles of 12 to 19 millimeter on the day of the trigger administration have the greatest contribution to the number of oocytes retrieved. And this is consistent with the current lit literature, which suggests that follicles of sizes 16 to 22 on the day of oocyte retrieval, that is measured two days before that, contribute most to the number of oocytes retrieved, to the competent number of oocytes retrieved. So I want to stress this again, the tertiary or the percentage of patients with the highest proportion of follicles within the size range of 12 to 19 on the day of the trigger will retrieve more competent oocytes as compared to the patients who also reach the criteria, two or three follicles exceed 17, but still they have a lot of follicles less than, uh, are not in this size uh, range. If you waited more after reaching these criteria, three follicles exceeding 17, and most of the follicles are in the range, or 60% of the follicles are in the range of 12 to 19, if you waited for more follicles, this is on the antagonist, if you waited for more follicles to attain size more than 19, as we sometimes usually do, uh, then you will end up with uh, post mature oocytes and with progesterone rising. So if you reach two follicles, two to three follicles exceeding 17, and you have most of the, your cohort on the day of the trigger in the range of 12 to 18 or 19, then trigger, and you will have a good uh, cohort of competent oocytes. If you waited more on the antagonist, not on the agonist. If you waited more on the antagonist, till most of the follicles exceed 19, if you use the same, we, because we use this criteria in the long agonist, but if you waited for most of the follicles to exceed 19, uh, progesterone will rise and oocytes will tend to be uh, not appropriate for the purpose that you want them to do. The duration of stimulation, the TOM, is also important. Again, we are stressing this again, but this is different in poor responders as compared to high responders. If you look to poor responders, a shorter duration of stimulation will get you the results that you want, will get you a good and decent pregnancy rate. Whereas a short stimulation in normal, in average responders, as those that Professor Khalifa and Professor Islam mentioned, 
if you want for shorter stimulation, you will have poor results. And in normal responders, if you uh, prolong the stimulation after 11 days, you will also have poor response, but a stimulation in the range of seven to nine days usually gets you there. Does prolongation of stimulation affect the embryos or affect the endometrium? Actually, in stimulated cycle, the endometrium is a little bit advanced, not uh, in terms of uh, luteinization, but in terms of receptor expression. So the receptor expression is altered in a manner that advances the endometrium. This is just in properly stimulated cycles. If you exceed the length of stimulation more, you will definitely end up with highly advanced endometrium that will affect, of course, the fresh stimulated uh, cycle. So if you look for uh, a stimulation cycle, you will find that the estrogen receptors on the glands and the progesterone receptors on the gland and stroma are having a different profile as compared to natural cycle, and this has been uh, viewed repeatedly. So uh, let me conclude with uh, again referring to SG guidelines that the association of follicle size as a triggering criteria with outcome has not been sufficiently studied, although we have looked at several studies that can be used as indicator and physician may choose the follicle size upon which final oocyte maturation is triggered <clears throat> on case-to-case -case, uh, basis. Two to three follicles exceeding 17 with most of the cohort in the range of 12 to 18 is an excellent uh, criterion, uh, provided that the days of stimulation are within seven to nine days. So if you use these three criteria, we can individualize the timing of trigger in uh, infants to obtain uh, an oocyte that is not only mature, but oocyte that is competent to do what we really wanted to do. Thank you very much.